Hey everyone, it's Dave here in Melbourne. <laughs> just joking. Um, I've just been watching Ben Rankin's um, fantastic video on Nick Cave, and I've got to admit, I've watched half of it, but I'm so excited I had to stop and make a comment video, and then I'll finish watching it later. It's, um, in my opinion, um, Nick Cave is Australia's greatest ever. You know, he's he's up there with Henry Lawson and um, Banjo Patterson and um, that opera singer, um, whatever her name was. And, um, you know, um, what's that other one? Um, painter, um, writer, author. Norman Lindsay, he's just an Australian icon. Nick Cave, you know, fantastic, fan, 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 fantastic. And still pumping it out. And like Roy Orbison, I'm sure he would be a Roy Orbison fan, just as I am. A fairly tragic wife in that losing, Roy lost two sons in a fire and Nick's lost two boys in tragic circumstances from different mothers, but um, man, he's, um, one thing I did hear somewhere, I'll, I'll, I'll show this first. Uh, <clears throat> this, this is the first really great Nick Cave album. I mean, Shivers is probably the best song he ever wrote <laughs> on the first um, Boys Next Door album. It's just such a classic. Um, but this is this one. This is from top to bottom, a freaking masterpiece. This is my original. Um, I bought this when I was living in Canberra, um, capital of Australia, back in the eighties, and uh, along with Huskadoo, um, albums like this got me through living in that hellhole. But uh, this one's a bit boring compared with um, Ben's um, reissue. But this is the ori an original I bought at the time. And it's on an, a label called Expanded. Uh, there it is. Nothing particularly interesting, but um, fairly decent weight. You know, it's not super heavy, but... It wasn't ultra thin like some of them were at the time. Um, this album, man, this, oh my God, I thrashed this. It's in one of those hell, uh, share households from hell. You know, I ended up attacking a guy, throwing a, an axe through one guy's windscreen. And um, the police were so scared of me. They, they, they didn't want to know. They said, they said, who owns the lease on this place? And I said, I do. And he said, well, it's, they said, it's your problem. You sort it out. So the guy um, cut my brake lines and um, I found myself without brakes at high speed on a highway. He moved to Perth not long afterwards. I went looking for him. Anyway, um, heavy vibes. The heroin capital of Australia in the 80s, Canberra, as well as the capital city. Um, I'm starting to waffle. I'm all excited, um, Ben, by that fantastic video you're making, mate. And, and mate, look at that. This... She's hit. What a way to start off an album. You know, Dead Joe, I'm certain, is about his dad, uh, who was killed in a car accident, his father, the teacher. And I always wondered what it was really about, but he co-wrote it, I believe, with his girlfriend at the time, the bass, bass player that he um, collaborated with, not Lydia Lunch, but an Australian girl who, who died, I think, two or three years back. Um, and I'm sure she said something about Dead Joe. And if you listen to the song Dead Joe, there's so, there's so much anger and energy and power on this album. This is the greatest punk album of all time. It is. It's, it's hands down. No one can touch this album. No one. She's hit. Dead Joe, the dim locator. Now, how's that for a title? Hamlet. Pow, pow, pow. Several sins, and they're moving aside too. What a way to start. Big Jesus trash can. Trash can! 
Kiss Me Black, Six Inch Gold Blade, Cupid Doll, and Junkyard. On the back here, it says Missing Link 4AD, made in Italy. This is, I, mean, I thought it was French. This, uh, sorry about the washed out colours, it's pissing down rain and the weather shit. Um, good gloomy Nick Cave weather. Um, yeah, I, it's Italian. I bought this at the time, so in an, a great little, in the only good, a great little import record shop uh, in Canberra at the time. Thank God it was there, called Impact Records. Really nice guy running it, and um, he had a lot of imports. So I've only got four nicks on vinyl left. I had them all on um, vinyl at some stage, but I had a, a tragic... Uh, circumstances a lot of them had to go uh, okay but luckily I'm so glad I kept these and these are all ones I think I got when I was living in Canberra now this is the next um, one I will show uh, this I love this beyond belief the birthday party artwork done by Nick himself um, mutiny God damn, this is so great. Side one, Jennifer's Veil, and then Mutiny in Heaven. Side two, Schwab Land, and Say a Spell. The classic early lineup Nick Vocals, Tracy Pugh, Bass, Roland S. Howard, Guitar, Mick Harvey, Drums, uh, Mute, and Powder Works. Love that. Album cover. Love it. And two 12 inch singles. Thank God I kept these. Um, oh, sorry, no, they're not. One 12 inch single. Uh, the Ship Song. And flip it over, and it's the Train Song. <laughs> oh, I love this. Yeah, so this is off um, the Ship Songs on. Which album is that off? I've, I've got all the albums, or well, most of them. Um, maybe one or two missing on CD, but I'm not going to show them because they're too boring to look at. But I'm just glad I kept a handful of vinyls. This was um, the uh, ship song is, I think, on The Good Son or, or yeah, it might be, or no, nah, whatever, um, 1990. Uh, I only just woke up. Please forgive me. I'm all excited. This is a UK copy on mute, on the mute label. But the train song it was like, wasn't available. And it's a great song. Um, but they just didn't put it on the album for some reason. So glad I kept that. And this is actually the album. Because I think I've got it on CD as well. And I thought I had this as a 12 inch single. So I haven't played this since I bought it. Um, this one is actually a Canadian. Can you believe it? I bought this at the time and uh, a Canadian import. Amazing, huh? On um, Enigma Records, Culver City, California, uh, Mute Records, printed in Canada. Um, yeah, so this is, oh man, what an album. The Mercy Seat, Up Jump the Devil. Deanna, oh my god, I love that. Watching Alice, Mercy, Side 2, City of Refuge. Yes, um, that uh, wonderful song by that blind black guy. Slowly Goes the Night, Sunday Slave, Sugar, 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 A New Morning. Um, yeah, this is... Um, the first real classic lineup of the Bad Seeds, you know, Blixer Bargeld, Roland Wolf, Thomas Weidler. So you got three, three um, Germans there. Kid Congo Powers, wonderful Kid Congo Powers, a Yank, I do believe, and Mick Harvey, an Aussie, and and Nick Cave himself. So Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds, Bad Seeds, tend to pray. So that's all I've got on vinyl now. This is getting running away from me. But, um, yeah, Dead Joe, I'm pretty sure, is about his father's uh, 
losing his father and he can hear the pain and misery in the, what an album junkyard anyway that's enough of my waffling i'm going to go back to watching finishing off watching that video um the pity is i never actually got to see him any version of him his bands live ever so which is just unfortunate they just weren't around i was living in the wrong places at the time or whatever and uh, so i never got to actually see him but um I think I sort of st stopped buying. I think the last one was um, Abattoir Blues or something. Uh, I gave that to a girlfriend of mine at the time. And um, and I think that was the last, The Liar, The Liar something, L-Y-R-E, an Abattoir Blues slash Abattoir Blues album. Um, I am aware of his stuff since then, which is probably 20 years ago. But uh, to me, it's his, eight, his 90s, 80s, late 80s to mid 90s outputs where I'm really at, you know. That's, that's the stuff I really love. Anyway, that's enough of me waffling. Um, I'll put this up and, and hope Ben watches it. Good on you, Ben. You're a national living treasure too, mate, for sure. See ya.